Welcome to Relation Tales, please like this video. And subscribe Relation Tales. I 36 male and my wife 31 female. Were married for 6 years before I learned something heartbreaking that destroyed our marriage. Before we got married, my wife and I were very good friends. And our relationship was strong because the organizations we worked for were on the same street, and we used to see each other all the time. But because I was always searching for greener pastures, I had to move to a different state where I still live. After I traveled to resume my new job, aside from my best friend and family, my wife was the only person that always called to check on me, and we talked on the phone the whole evening or chat with each other throughout the day. It felt great to know someone out there cared about me, and in no time, I caught feelings for her. After months of being apart, I asked her out, and since she was also single, she said yes, and that's how our love story began. Even though our relationship was more of a long-distance one, I still felt loved and trusted her so much. On my end, I tried to communicate with her as much as possible, and we took turns visiting each other on weekends or whenever we were free. After two years of our long-distance relationship, we got married, and she was forced to relocate and live in my state. Luckily, she got a job in her field, and the pay was great. She was also very passionate about her career, and she quickly climbed the ladder in her organization. It had to do with the extra professional certifications she got in her years of expertise. Marriage-wise, our relationship was great, and we were both happy, me especially. I loved her so much, and did not imagine being with any other woman except her, and I believed we would grow old together. Initially, before we got married, we agreed we would not have kids yet because I didn't think I was ready to be a father, but after one year of marriage, I changed my mind. We talked about it again and she was eager to stop taking her birth control pills, and fortunately for us after a couple of months, months, she got pregnant and gave birth to a boy. The birth of our son came with an extra dose of happiness, and he even motivated me to work harder so I could take care of him. I even took an additional online job as a freelancer to earn some extra bucks. On the other hand, my wife did not need an additional job since taking care of our child was already working on its own, and I encouraged her to work very little and rest more, and I would take care of the rest. Eventually, after our son was almost a year old, she resumed work, and everything continued the way it was. The only difference in our lives was our son. Some months after my wife resumed work, I noticed she started dressing differently, which was unlike her. Before our son came, she never really cared about what she wore and would literally wear anything as long as the colors were right, but after she resumed work, everything changed. The thing is, I did not have a problem with her dressing differently and being conscious of what she wore. I was more concerned with how the dresses made her look. For someone who has recently given birth, her stomach was visible through her tight clothes, but she didn't mind. She would even go as far as wearing glasses that would expose her brooms and something a little bit under her hips. I complained about her new choice of clothes and told her I wasn't comfortable with them, but her response was always, I'm not wearing them for you, I'm wearing them for me, and she would leave the house in anger. It got so bad that we started fighting about it until I finally found out she decided to change her wardrobe because of how she felt in her skin. Indeed, her body had changed, and she added a lot of pounds because of her pregnancy. And according to her, she wanted to look and feel younger, so she started dressing differently. Honestly, I felt remorseful for pressuring her to change her attire, akin to a call girl. I apologized sincerely and refrained from mentioning it again. Concurrently, our son was predominantly under my wife's care. We enrolled him in daycare, where she would drop him off in the morning before work, and I would pick him up around 3 p.m. daily. On a particular day when I was scheduled to retrieve our son, an unexpected work matter arose, preventing me from leaving on time. Despite numerous attempts to contact my wife and inform her of the change in plans, she remained unresponsive. As the clock ticked past 3 p.m., I hesitated to appear as if I had collected our son without her knowledge. Growing increasingly concerned after receiving no response to my calls, I reached out to her workplace. To my astonishment, I learned that she had been terminated several months earlier for engaging in a relationship with an intern. Initially, I double-checked my phone to confirm I had dialed the correct organization, and indeed I had. The revelation seemed perplexing since my wife left home every morning at 7.30, often returning late due to claimed overtime. I was so shocked that I lost focus for a couple of minutes before responding to the person on the phone. I ended up asking a colleague of mine to cover for me, and I went to take her son home. When I got home that day, I couldn't stop thinking about what I found out. To even show how good she was at pretending, she would come home and still pretend to work on her laptop so I wouldn't suspect anything. So eventually, she returned home that evening and talked about her day at work, and all the things that happened. There were all lies, and I kept my cool, played along, and pretended like I didn't know she had been fooling me. That same day, before I returned home, I stopped by a store and grabbed one of those many trackers, because I was curious to know where she went every morning and returned late in the evening. 
The following morning, when I put her son in the backseat of her car, I secretly placed the tracker and kissed her goodbye. Immediately, she left the house. I started tracking her. As expected, she stopped first at her son's daycare. And from there, she went somewhere else, definitely not her workplace. She stayed there for several hours, went out, and returned to the same house. I tracked her for a whole week. And it was the same pattern until I decided to pay her a surprise visit one day. That day she left the house as usual and even informed me she would be returning late, because there was an important project routine was working on. I called in sick at work already because I knew I would be showing up to her lover's house. Meanwhile, I had stopped by the house before to know the exact apartment she was going to, and I knew what her lover looked like. He was younger and opened the door to welcome her whenever she went there. When I arrived, I knocked on the door, pretending to be a pizza delivery guy. At first, I feared they wouldn't open the door because they didn't order pizza, but I was just dumb luck. Immediately the young boy she was having an affair with opened the door, I pushed my way inside, and at the same time, my wife walked in on a snake, and she froze. I was already prepared, so I was doing a Facebook Live video, and I recorded myself from the moment I left my car until I entered her lover's house. When she realized I was recording her, she tried to cover her face and run back inside, but she slipped and fell, resulting from her coming out of the bathroom. I know it is cruel. But I used the opportunity to record her well and say everything I wanted. It would be an understatement if I said I was only heartbroken. She literally destroyed everything we shared, planned, and even our son's life. That day, she didn't bother coming home because I warned her not to. I packed her things on our front porch, but she only came to take them a week later. As for revenge, I tagged most of her family members and friends on the live video I made, and she was so embarrassed. The comments were crazy too, and I'm sure she read all of them. Only enough, she never tried to beg me or explain. She astutely recognized that our relationship had come to an end. Her intelligence prevailed as she wisely refrained from bringing her infidelity into our home, potentially resulting in lasting consequences for both her and her lover. Following our divorce, aided by a competent lawyer, I secured custody of our son. Faced with the scrutiny and embarrassment of our townspeople, neighbors, friends, and church members, exacerbated by a viral live video, she chose to leave town. Presently, I am the sole parent our son has and looks up to, and my confidence in his paternity is affirmed by a conducted test. Taking a break from romantic entanglements, I am determined to channel all my energy into raising my son and providing him a good life. Now, let's delve into the second story. My connection with Andrea began at a mutual friend's wedding, where we shared the dance floor as part of the groomsman and bridesmaid couple. After exchanging contacts, we grew closer over time, becoming good friends, engaging on social media, and eventually spending more time together. Four months into our acquaintance, I asked her to be my girlfriend, and shortly afterward, she moved in with me. Although some may disapprove of my decision to cohabitate after only six weeks of dating, my deep love for her compelled me to want to wake up next to her every morning. Andrea, a remote web developer, was not only a nice person and great company but also intelligent and funny, with a humor I cherished. Our two-year relationship had its challenges, and during the first year, she exhibited a sudden coldness, causing a strain in our connection. Before her change in attitude started, we used to cook together, talk about my day at work, and she would talk about how easy or challenging her work was that day too. But suddenly, I noticed she changed and would focus more on her phone and leave me to stay or watch television alone. Eventually, I found out she was flirting with someone online, and they were planning to meet the following week. I was so mad that she was flirting with some guy she met on Facebook, and they planned to hang out together the following week. Their chats were provocative, and the most annoying part was that she didn't tell him she was in a relationship or try to stop him from flirting with her. It was almost like she enjoyed it. When I confronted her about it, she apologized and said they were only playing around and it was nothing serious. She blocked in to prove to me that there was nothing serious between them and promised it would never happen again. Now that I think about it, that should have been a red flag for me. Although flirting with someone online is not enough reason to quit a relationship. I should have ended things with her because no one knows what level their flirting would have escalated to if I did not find out. Well, a year after that happened, we married. We never had issues of her flirting with anyone again. And I never found anything suspicious on her phone on the days I would unexpectedly ask to go through her phone. We were married for two years and didn't have any children because we didn't want any. Meanwhile, there was this very close friend of mine who was like a family friend. And his wife and Andrea were very good friends too. We had this small group of friends, four married couples, and two single men. We didn't exactly form, but we were always hanging out as a group and supported one another in good and bad times. Aside from family, they were my support system, and if one of us was going through a tough time, say financial problems, we would all help out in any way we could, even if it meant contributing some money. When things were good, 
we would all dine and celebrate together. One day, I had recently sold a very expensive house to a client that had been giving me a tough time, and I had already told my friends that if a contract clicked, I would throw a $500 dollar bill. The party was meant to only be for the members of our friendship group. By adding three more people, making us a total of 13 people minus their kids. During the party, I realized my phone battery was already low, so I went to our bedroom to get my charger or probably charge my phone there. But somehow, I got distracted by a short funny video one of our friends dropped on our group chat. Coincidentally, immediately after the video stopped playing, I heard my wife giggle and talk in a hushed tone with a man. They didn't know I was in our bedroom. And the door was partially open, so they stopped to kiss briefly before entering the kitchen, and I was so shocked. I didn't actually see them kiss, but I knew they did because of the sound I heard. I was so heartbroken, and I could not believe Andrea was cheating on me after all the promises she made. It wasn't just her cheating that hurt. She cheated on me with my closest friend and her group. The funny thing was that his wife was in the living room with their two daughters, complete, completely ignorant of what was happening. I was so boiled up and thought of confronting them, but I knew it would only make things worse, primarily because of how angry I was. So I went to the kitchen, but before I entered, I announced my presence with a mild cough so they could have enough time to pretend nothing was going on between them. I talked to them briefly, grabbed their bottle of water, and left. But before I did, I turned on the voice recorder on my phone and left it in a very natural position so that they wouldn't suspect anything was fishy, even if they saw it. Shortly after they left the kitchen, I took it and listened to everything they said. They were planning to hang out that night and my wife already devised the perfect plan to get rid of me. Hearing that even broke me more, so I devised a plan. Before that time, I had learned a couple of audio editing hacks, so I edited the audio and highlighted the part they talked about their affair and how they would get rid of us in no time. By that, they meant Andrea divorcing me and her affair partner would divorce his wife. Later that night, I allowed her to proceed with her plan and pretended I didn't know anything. I had been heartbroken twice in the past, so my heart was already used to that kind of pain. The following day, I anonymously sent the audio to all her friends' email addresses, including her affair partner and his wife, and waited for everyone to react. First, they were shocked at what they had heard and could not believe it. I knew they had listened to the audio when one of them called and asked if I had gotten any audio from an anonymous email, and when I said no, he forwarded it to me. I pretended to be shocked and used the opportunity to confront Andrea. Honestly, I thought she would deny it and act innocent, but she started crying and begging me. She said she cheated on me because she wanted options, and she felt she was stuck with me and kind of felt suffocated. Then she begged me to forgive her and not let her infidelity ruin the future we were building. The audacity concerning her talk of wanting to have options. I was shocked to hear that because Andrea was the same person who told me she was a one-man woman and she never cheated on her spouse and would never do that. So it was all surprising to hear that she wanted options. I know I acted tough on the outside, but I was so hurt deep inside. I loved her so much and wanted what we had to work. Ultimately, I divorced her so she could go and be with her lover. I was thinking her lover's wife would divorce her husband, but she didn't. Somehow he managed to convince her that he was framed and she believed him how stupid of her. They even cut ties with our group and insulted everyone for not standing by them. As for Andrea, she had no place with us anymore, and she cut ties with our social circle too. Everyone was so disappointed when Andrea admitted their affair started six months after our wedding and they had been fooling everyone, including me. Reputation was ruined too and she could no longer get favors and support. It's only been nine months and I figured putting this here would help me heal faster and relieve my burden. Honestly, that was all that was left of my heart and I can't guarantee it I will fully love any other woman I meet. I have been badly hurt and it has changed everything about me. Second story. My ex GF cheated on me with her ex and now wants another chance. What should I do? Hey everyone, long read for context but I really need some unbiased help here so I met this girl a few months ago and she wouldn't stop telling me how abusive her BF was. She seemed really nice and after meeting a few times, we hooked up and she soon broke up with her BF. She also convinced me that she had mentally checked out of the relationship months ago and I made her realize how good a partner can be. However, she also wouldn't kick him out of the picture and that annoyed me but I thought everyone deals with it differently and let it slide. After a rough patch of the ex being in the picture, it became alright and she decided to block him and focus on us. I also told her if she wants me to be a friend in some moments as the breakup was fresh, I can do that for a while until there's no one else involved. I was scheduled for a three-week vacation last month and she dropped me off at the airport. Everything seemed to be going well and the vacation itself had its highs, despite a few challenges typical of long-distance relationships. Upon my return, she picked me up from the airport, 
and we enjoyed our time together. However, the very next day, she instigated an unnecessary argument, expressing her unhappiness during the vacation and suggesting ending things, though she refrained due to my family visit. Later, I discovered that she met her ex a few days after I left and again the day after I returned. Additionally, I stumbled upon an inappropriate video of her, which she thought I hadn't seen. This situation involves a consistent pattern of lying and infidelity. I told her we need to go no contact and if I change my mind, it'll let her know. She contacted me after a week and now has valid reasons for why she did what she did and wants a second chance. She says that her past experiences made her fearful of being vulnerable and made her avoidant so whenever we would have an argument, she would have constant doubts if she made the right choice. She is indeed very remorseful and ashamed of what she has done and is willing to answer all questions and even give all her passwords. I just want to know if this is even worth giving a chance. She does seem pretty motivated to work on herself and wants to show me how good of a partner she can be. She says she is now fully committed in doing that and there's no one else in her mind than me. Any suggestions? TLDR. GF cheated with her ex and now wants another chance to prove herself and work on herself. Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Relation Tales. If you were moved by these stories, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Don't miss out on the upcoming emotional roller coaster of relationships. Your support means the world, and we can't wait to share more compelling tales with you. Until next time, remember, every relationship has a story worth telling. See you soon.